welcome to this uh, module on a public load balancer demo. In here, we would uh, create a public load balancer and see it in action. So let me jump to the console. We have been using the OCI console for some of our other uh, modules. Right here, you can see uh, the burger menu. And if I click on it, uh, I can see the various services. Um, right now, I'm in the US East region. Uh, right here in networking, uh, I can bring up a load balancer from, from the link here. Right. So first thing I see here, there is not a load balancer which exists. Right Now, to create a load balancer, I need a virtual cloud network. So just before uh, this uh, recording this uh, module, I went ahead and I created this load balancer uh, VCN. And it's actually rather straightforward, but I just wanted to save all the steps uh, and save some time in the demo. So there are three subnets. There's an 81 subnet, there's an 82 subnet, and there's a load balancer subnet. Now the difference is 81 and 82 are AD specific subnets, but the load balancer subnet is a regional subnet. I made all of them public. I could have made these AD subnets uh, uh, as, as uh, <clears throat> I, I made all three public, but there is no requirement for me to uh, keep uh, these in the <clears throat> in the public subnet as well uh, as, uh, as well uh, till the point that my compute instances can be reached from the load balancer. That's all I really uh, care about, right? So, so right here uh, I can see that uh, my uh, 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 route table. I just have one route table, and uh, it takes the route to the internet. And there's an internet gateway here. Uh, and again, the same route table is used for all three subnets. I could, again, like I said, uh, I could keep my backends uh, with a different route table. For security list, I have two different security lists. So there's a default security list, which my AD subnets have. And port 80 is open here, as you can imagine, because I have a web server running there. Uh, for my load balancer security list, I really don't have any rules. So ingress is empty, egress is empty, right? So just created a shell, and it's all empty right now. The final thing is if I click on compute, I can see that I have two instances running. So there's a web server one uh, running in uh, 81 and there's a web server two running in 82. And it's pretty straightforward. If I click here, I can see that this is my web server one. And if I click here, I can see that I have my web server two running here, right? So rather straightforward. Now, this is all the pre-work I had to do uh, before my, uh, I could show you the load balancer in action, right? Because load balancer needs, uh, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to put the, a load balancer in front of those two compute instances. So creating a load balancer is rather straightforward. I click on a create load balancer here, and I'm going to use a public load balancer. Uh, in the next module, we'll talk about a private load balancer. So the name default name is fine. Right here, I choose uh, the maximum bandwidth available. So small is 100 Mbps, medium is 400, large is 8 Gbps, right? Uh, I'm choosing small, that's fine. And down here, you can see that it's asking for a virtual cloud network uh, because uh, load balancer needs a VCN where, it, where it's running, right? So I pick the load balancer VCN, and then it's asking me for uh, a subnet for the load balancer itself. And remember, it will make a active copy and a failover copy uh, in, 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 in different ADs because I'm in a, uh, a multi-AD region. Uh, so I choose the load balancer subnet here and I've chosen the load balancer we see in here, right? Uh, if I click on uh, additional uh, advanced options, I can do things like tagging, etc., right? And if I was using network security groups, I could use them to control the traffic here. So many times people ask, backends have to be in the same VCN or can they be in a different VCN? They can be in a different VCN till the point you have the right security list, you have the right um, network security groups, and you have the route tables properly configured. Uh, there is no need to put all your compute instances and your load balancer in, in the same uh, VCN. So I click on uh, next step and right here it's asking me to choose a load balancing policy. I can use a weighted round robin, uh, IP hash or least connection. I'll go with weighted round robin, that's the default. You see it's it's checked here, right? Right now there is no backends which are added. So I'm going to add backends here and right now I will choose the, the web server one and the web server two backends which are running in the same VCN uh, in different subnets, right? But as you can see here, Bastion, database, web, my auto scaling instance uh, instance pool um, all show up here. These are not in the same VCN. They exist in, in some other VCN, right? Uh, but the reason they all show up is, like I said, I could have a load balancer running in one VCN and I could have my compute instances running in all together different VCNs till 
security list, network security groups, and the route tables are configured properly. So I choose web server 81, web server 82, and add my selected uh, backends. Now, right here, it's asking me to choose uh, my health check policy. I will go with a TCP uh, because I'm just making a TCP connection, getting response back. Uh, with HTTP, I'll have to configure my um, uh, URL and, and, uh, and all those things. Uh, but probably I'm just showing a quick demo. So TCP is fine, uh, port 80 is fine, uh, and I can change some of these options here, right? Interval, etc. Now, if I look at uh, advanced options, uh, I can see that security list. There is um, there is there is an option here, which says manually configure security list rules uh, or automatically add security list, right? And as you can see here, that uh, it's showing. Uh, the traffic uh, egress rule uh, going to port 80 uh, for the first subnet and the second subnet. This subnet is 81 and this subnet is 82 uh, because the, right here are my uh, uh, my uh, instances running in 81 and 82. So the system is doing that. Uh, if you don't want the system to do that automatically, you could manually configure it as well, right? Uh, that's completely up to you. Uh, but right now you can see uh, the, that the system is doing that. Uh, and now it's also opening my uh, ingress security rules uh, for my uh, the, my uh, load balancer secu uh, security list. And for this one, let me just, okay, click next to And right here, it's asking me to choose uh, HTTPS or HTTP, right? I'll choose uh, HTTP. Because uh, I'm again, I'm just running a quick uh, uh, demo showing uh, uh, two web servers running behind this load balancer, right? And now I'll go ahead and create load balancer. And within a minute or so, you would see that I would get a public IP address, and I should be able to bring that up in the browser and uh, and ping the two web servers in a round robin fashion. So let me just uh, pause the video here uh, for 15 seconds, uh, and the load balancer will come up, uh, and we'll use the public IP address. All right, so it looks like my load balancer is uh, up and running and I can click here and I can see uh, the public IP address here. Uh, it's available, right? So if I go ahead and bring this up in my browser, you can see that uh, my, my load balancer is working, right? And it's sending the traffic in a round robin fashion. So I could click web server one and I could click web server two and I can see the traffic is, is coming here, right? Well, uh, that was a quick uh, demo of the OCI load balancer service in action. In the next module, we'll look into uh, a private load balancer. Thank you.